Bonjour, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Magpie Channel podcast episode eight. eight. Cheers okay. to Anarchy Brewery, as always, for hosting us. You can grab yourself a pack of war beer and support war flags at the same time by scanning the QR code on your screen or getting the video link in the description. Thank you as well, everyone that's locked in live already, and obviously our audio <laughs> listeners as well on podcast uh, platforms like Spotify, Google, Apple, wherever you get them. You can listen to us there. It's international break. Mm. So I call up England's number one. Keg. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Not too bad. I will be uh, England's mm. number one next week. You will be. Charity game with the gloves on. Yep. Replacing Nick Pope. All right. You'll be in there. Midget Let's arms. Get Pope injury. Huh? That'll be very good. I mean, that's a good chance. <laughs> there's, there's a good chance. <laughs> there's a fair chance I'll pick up some sort of injury. <laughs> you are playing in goal. Uh, me as well. Fair chance I'll pick up a Callum <laughs> Wilson special. <laughs> As I'll be the captain on Sunday, leading the lane, number nine. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube team there against Wilfie's Bruno Magic Hats. That's for charity on Sunday at Newcastle United Foundation. So looking forward to that one. Had a little mm. kick about a day. Legs are completely gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm way too old That's now That's why I'm going in go. Smart. Very smart. Hope myself some new gloves. Buzzing for it. You can have a look at our latest uh, tweets there. And uh, you can hit the link in the description for those and, and, and uh, donate if you fancy it mm -hmm. for the cause. I think they've raised about five and a quid nice. so far. Keep so that's going. very good. Well done to Wilfie and Bruno's Magic Hat and his dad and everyone else involved. So looking forward to that one on Sunday. Since it's international break, there is still loads to talk about. Loads of topics to get through <laughs> of on this evening. So we'll start off with seasons and over. Season is not it's over not, for me. I'm not. not having it. I'm not having no. all this negativity. I did the match reaction against uh, Man City on Saturday night. Everyone's saying, oh, Matt, that's it done. Season's over. <laughs> not for me. I'm still staying positive. I yeah, still think course. there's plenty to fight to for yeah. this season. European places. We haven't won a trophy in 60 years or something. The so why, why does this make any difference? Like, the, se the season's far from over. Like, it's just another season without a trophy. Like... Are the last 60 years irrelevant? Like, have, have we not achieved anything in 60 years? Like, different things can cause for achievements and accomplishments, like getting into the top six, top four. Like, they're all achievements, so there's still a lot to play for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, season's far from over. Like, yeah, it's disappointing. Like, realistically, well, we're going to win the Champions League? No. No. FA Cup, solid. Carabao Cup, I mean, we're nearly Could won have. last year, so that, that's have. a strong possibility. So that's disappointing not to at least get to as far as we did last year, but it's just one of them things, you know what I mean? Mm. It's been a difficult season, like the added pressure of Champions League and all the unforeseen things such as the injuries and Tenali's suspension and obviously the, the the whole amount of games that we've had. Like, it's been a difficult year, so it's just one of them things. Like, it's, it's, there's still plenty to play for. Currently, we're not going to be playing in Europe where, we, where we're at, but we still can, and that's something to chase. So that's a lot to play for. There is, like, because the next game in itself, Saturday the 30th against West Ham is mm, massive. It is. I yeah. think what are with three or four points off them. They played the other the other day, got a got a draw. Um, so it is so close. Yeah, just there good. is still six at a push, but seventh or eighth, there's definitely a fight for there. Like we're tenth on 40 points, West Ham in seventh on 44. Mm -hmm. So we're four points behind them with the game in hand. Yeah. And we do play them next. So we can get that down to one point. Yeah. And then if we win our next game, we'll be in seventh, which would be Europa League. Yeah, exactly. Six, my United with seven points off. Bit of an ask. They're going to be full of confidence now after their FA Cup win against Liverpool. But they're a mixed bag. You never know what, what you're going to get with, with Ten Hogs team. But there, it's looking like obviously eighth could be enough this year as well for Conference League mm -hmm. yeah. with the extra places and stuff. We're only two points off Brighton there in, in eighth. So... And we'll play them as well. So the massive thing is that we'll play these teams in and around us. And that's a huge chance to state your claim for European football. Yeah, absolutely. And like Wolves just ahead of us, like we're, we're a better team than Wolves. Like oh, they're only a point behind them at the minute. Like, so yeah, that, that's loads to play for. And whether we get European football or not, like it's, it's just like we, we spoke about it last week. Everyone wanting Eddie Howe out. Like I'm still fully on, on board with being like a part of the journey. Sometimes you need to take a step back to go forward. I say there's been so many negative things like injuries, Tonali suspension, the added pressure of Champions League, more games. Like it's just been a difficult season. And the FFP rules that we've spoken about nearly every week <laughs> we haven't been able to improve the squad of who we signed last season. We had we spent nearly all of our budget on Tonali, who got suspended. We had to sell some maximum to be able to afford 
Barnes, Barnes, who's been out all season, just come back, then picked up another injury. Class. Tino cannot really get a game for some mad reason because he's probably been the best signing. <laughs> so, well, he absolutely definitely yeah, was the best summer signing. Couldn't Tino. afford to sign Hamza Chowdhury on loan in January. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's been a hard, hard season. So, it is what it is. Like, I'm sure like we'll we'll get some more money in the summer. We'll FFP will allow it to actually spend a decent amount of money in the summer. So, We'll just, we'll just go again. Like wherever we finish, it's fine. Like, don't worry about it. They didn't worry about it. They didn't worry about it. No. Everything's fine. It's all fine. Calm down. Exactly. Just relax. Didn't worry about it. Yeah. Let's say there's games in hand. There's West Ham. We'll beat West Ham. Close the gap on there. There's still European football to get, even if it's Conference League. I'll take it. No, nobody really wants to play in the Conference League, I'll especially take it. like yeah, yeah, Tottenham's like they were like when when was it just put like two years ago, wasn't it? Uh, the Conference League, like. Tottenham finished in that position. They didn't really <laughs> want to play in there, but... No, I got knocked clean out now, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, no. But for, but for us... Villa. Villa are flying in that. Yeah. Uh, West, West Ham, Ham won it last year. year. So Jeez. it's it's not um, it's not frowned upon as much as it used to be now for me. I don't nah. think so. Like yeah. I, I wouldn't either. I know people obviously got expectations now just being the Champions League, being the likes of San Siro, but... Unrealistic expectations. I, I well, I've, overachieved. I so. We've definitely overachieved last season. So now there's this expectation which I think is quite ridiculous imagine if we had got conference league last season would have been buzzing if, if we it didn't was in have reverse, that season we had yeah, yeah. if we finished Probably seventh off. last season and fourth this season like no one would be complaining oh but, Eddie Howe manager the year and all that. yeah but I think then because that was progression without a setback then there would be a level of expectation so if we didn't get top four next year then there would be uh, a level of expectation and a bit of pressure to get top four mm. whereas like now now like it's in reverse like in real time we're overachieved and now we've set a standard that everyone thinks that we need to maintain and it's it's gonna be hard to do that so yeah like i think like I say, sometimes you need to take a, a step back to go forward and this is a long-term journey and a long-term project like there's gonna be setbacks like just because this is only technically year two last year was the first full season of the new ownership and Eddie mm-hmm. Howe and everyone like were overachieved in year one. So this just being the first year, it's like everyone's, it's like kind of panic stations. Like, oh, we're taking a step back. Like, oh, it's not good enough. Blah, blah, blah. Like if in 10 years time, what was still got, obviously fingers crossed the same ownership, but it's like Eddie Howe. And if there's like, what could be up and down, what could spike, we could go up and that's just part of football. Like, mm. And that's why the Premier League is the best league in the world. It's like if this was Germany or France, I think, we would easily be a top three team in Germany. Straight away. But, but probably top four team in Germany, top three team in France, easily. But this is the Premier League. Like You've got City, United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, Villa, Brighton, West Ham. It's a hard league. Like Just mm. to maintain top four, top six is solid. Especially when we're coming from where we did under Ashley, no money, not spending, in a rot. Mm-hmm. And now that we can't change as much as we'd like because of FFP, then we have got mountains to climb and yeah and loads it's, it's of hurdles to overcome loads and loads of hurdles so yeah it's gonna take time so it's a, it's a disappointing season we're all disappointed that where we are in the league more than anything i think champions league we had some moments that'll last with we forever psg group of death couldn't do nothing about it yeah and we, we got far in the cup got put out in the quarters by man city so fuck like, you know right. i mean like that's gonna happen yep if, if you avoid Man City, then you do well. Mm. If somehow they manage to get put out early, then it's like a relief of everybody because you don't want Man City in the draw. Especially away. Especially away. <laughs> and we <Yeah>. got them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's just one of them seasons, man. I think uh, people have been a little bit over the top a bit, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move forward. I don't understand if we had got knocked out of the quarters by Coventry, like Wolves did, who are above us at the minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's the that's the we've said it magic of the cup magic that's, of the cup that's what happens you never know what in a semi final man yeah fair play them well good, done good to them eh? but that's where you, I'd, I'd see people maybe losing the plot a bit being like, what the hell the hell we've got beat off Coventry we've got beat off Coventry but I understand, we've been beat but, off yeah. one of the best teams that's ever existed <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean they're on for a double treble so <laughs> you can't argue too much like, I know on the night what frustrated me was that I don't think Man City were that good is what annoyed me and again it was really have to, no. it was too lucky deflections mm-hmm. obviously we should have closed them down defense should have done better but it's it is lucky um and it's not that we got better but i just think we could have shown more so i do get people's frustrations um oh yeah i, 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 I do get people it. i've seen people in the comments you know talking about dan dan burner oh. at wing back which wing is back devastating it's bad enough at left back bad enough anyway there's <laughs> <laughs> a wing back i couldn't believe that when i seen that I couldn't believe it. I oh, know it's, 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 it's been bad enough over the last few weeks. Still seeing him start at left back in bad form, but wing back, 
I couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, at the time we didn't know like Tino was injured. Obviously, we knew um, Trippier was going to be out. Yeah. We didn't say, "Oh my god." That's where it would have been nice to say, like Lewis. Well, I think the kids the played, came on. Though. The, the, the youngins played really, really well. I think we looked like we could have even got back into the game once Aye. the youngins came on. Like Hall, Miley, absolutely class. Anderson, like that was a new burst of energy, and we Aye. looked like we were really, really pushing to get into the game where we didn't with the senior players. So yeah, credit to the young lads, and I, I hope we'll see more of uh, Lewis Hall. Hopefully, that development that Eddie Howe's been going on about is coming it's it's been there to say like against man city i thought he was absolutely brilliant and miley as well so yeah fingers crossed fingers crossed because we're going to need them to step up we're going to get into the rumors later on in the episode of sean longstaff the leeds united is mm. doing the rounds today and yesterday um scouts watching bruno and isaac so we'll talk all about that <laughs> towards the end of the episode we'll get through these topics first and remember get your questions in i can see a few of them already but we'll touch on them throughout the show, mainly towards the end when we'll have the Q&A segment. So, we've said, there's still plenty to play for this season. There yeah. is 10 games to go. Not including the Australian trip, which we'll talk about soon. <laughs> no. But 10 Premier League matches left. Let's look at the fixtures, Keg, if you want to bring them up. Yeah. Newcastle United's remaining 10 fixtures this season We'll run through each and every one since the international break. We'll come back fresh. Hopefully the lads will. They're enjoying bloody Dubai at the minute. Nice and uh-huh. sunny out there. Wasn't Where nice? yes, In the brewery. It's actually quite warm in the brewery for change. I was going it's nice. freezing in this brewery, but yeah, not actually quite, well, quite warm in this. But, uh, it's, it's getting milder well. outside as well, which is nice. It's it getting is. lighter. Nice yesterday, wasn't Spring's it? Cool. That was nice, eh? Really Very nice. nice. I seen a bee. Did you? Get oh, I didn't know. No. Shit looks yellow. Brentford. <laughs> right then. Uh, who we played last game of the season. West Ham is the next game. Saturday the 30th, lunchtime kickoff. We've talked about it. It's massive. Mm-hmm. Got to win. Got to close that gap. Will we? Against West Ham at home, uh, it's, it's, it's a hard one. I, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not confident or biased. I think West Ham's always been one of them tricky teams. Like It can literally go anywhere. Like we've, we've battered them in recent years. I think we've probably got a better record against them away. Uh, like, I, was there, I was there this year and we, we should have won. Obviously, they yeah. scored a late equaliser. Uh, I think even in Premier League history, like West Ham's always been one of them teams that could easily finish in the top six or be battling relegation. Like, like, that just doesn't seem to be any consistency. In one, West one Ham. week, though, <laughs> look, one week they look like a side that is battling relegation, and the yeah. next week they look like a side that should be fifth or sixth. Yeah, one they're, week they're, they score three four, they win three four one. Next week they get beat two. <laughs> they just, honestly, West well, the Ham. most inconsistent team in Premier League history. Ah, so. So hard but because do. this is one of them years where they're having such a good year. Uh, last year was shit for them, the, ne- the script relegation, but the one European competition. Mm. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's West Ham in a nutshell. It really you need is. relegation, but you can win a European competition. Like. So yeah, West Ham's having a really, really good year. They're above us. Uh, obviously, we're looking to close the gap. We're the ones kind of trying to chase them. So we could potentially be the underdog, particularly in the form that we're in. So uh, yeah, it's not a... It's not an easy game. Uh, I think the last two home game seasons... Draws. Oh, draws. I think last year was 1-1 one, one or 2-2. Two, two. Not I, 2-2. Two, two I can't remember. Uh, I have, like I say, I think away we've had a really good record. Callum Wilson absolutely slays them. Remember last season, he's out when you just stood there watching watched the guy. Yeah. The and hips. Yeah, I would, would batter them away, but I home... Like, I, I, I don't know. I think a, a draw again might be a decent result but it doesn't really help us in our European charge no so it doesn't like, we've got to a, stamp our authority on yeah, it like. I, guess, yeah, I think a draw on paper is a decent result but it, it's not if we want to get somewhere then teams like West Ham with nine games after that like, would need to be kind of asserting some dominance and trying to close that gap a point does absolutely not to help that so Aye. yeah like for, for me I, I can see a draw that's probably going to be my prediction maybe it's Ooh. a 1-1 but yeah that, that really doesn't help but we need the three points I would do like less of the draws but it makes sense what you're saying because <laughs> the last few games at home have been draws mm, couldn't yeah. beat Bournemouth for Luton no exactly so, yeah, well, our form's been poor you know what I mean at home when you West really need team. to turn it around yeah um, I'm, I'm going to bag it yeah, I think that emphasizes why this is such a big game because it, it's not a guaranteed win, whereas yeah. other seasons against West Ham probably have been. You go in as the favourites, but nah, I'm uh, just just a bit nervous about this one. Yeah, uh, I do. I understand the nerves. Mm. I'm feeling them. I'll definitely feel them on the day. Early kickoff as well. Awful. I'm going to go... F- I'll, I'll see we'll win that one, though, 2-1. I'll see we'll sneak that one. I hope so. And then following that, guess what? We've got a midweek game against Everton. 
We Why never in a million years play them on a weekend. It's like, always what? three o'clock on a Saturday for the last 20 years. <laughs> it's always 7.45. This week it's 7.30. <laughs> oh, remember, we've been to Goodison a couple of times. Every single time, bang, Tuesday night, Thursday night. Yeah, so it definitely Tuesdays out. and Thursdays, always home and away. I know. It's always midweek at home as well, but always away. Aye. Really annoying, isn't that right? So this one actually is at home. So that's back-to-back home games for Newcastle that get six points, which will be huge Lovely. in this race, four, six, seventh, eighth. Goodison Park... We've been there already this season, so now it's the turn of the Toffees to come to the tune. Half seven, Tuesday the second. So again, big few days after Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Big few days. Saturday, Tuesday games. Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. It's like mm. being back in the Champions League. <laughs> really? It's hard to these midweek games anymore. Instead of welcoming Dorman, we're welcoming <coughs> Everton. Sean Dyche. <laughs> but that one, poof. That's got to be a win on a Pickford, can't we? We always like seeing Pickford come to Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Dorman's ah, always it's a good, good crack. I'm going to see we have to we have to get that one in. We've we've got to uh, and just to play devil's advocate a bit. Like Everton's kind of seemed like a derby because of that Pickford and the sort of Sunderland connection. Like without Sunderland in the Premier League, like Everton's kind of always been like a derby. Like there's always been that sort of derby atmosphere. Yeah, it's always been hostile. It's always been mint. Like I really enjoy games against Everton home in a way that absolutely class. Um, and I think particularly obviously because of the points deduction that that's great uh, relegation. If without it, they'd be comfortably around about 12, 13. So it hasn't really been a bad season for Everton because the last three years, four years, maybe they've been right on the cusp of relegation mm-hmm. without a points deduction. Um, so if for, for them, like minus the points deduction, they're having a decent season. Um, but yeah, they are scraping relegation because of the points deduction. So they'll be fighting for their lives. Like they'll want the three points to move them away from the bottom three. Obviously, uh, Forrest's point deductions maybe he's taking that pressure off them a little uh, bit because now there's a couple of teams between them and the drop zone. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a tough game. Like I say, it, it's a derby. It's a team fighting relegation. So, yeah, it's, it's not going to be easy. But uh, well, theoretically, this is one that we should be winning. It's got to be a bang on that one. Like. It should be. Like I say, theoretically, this has to be a win. Because I'm just looking at the fixtures there towards the end of the season. Oh, no, sorry. Those are the ones that need rearranged, to be fair, aren't they? Because of the cup. I was thinking, bloody hell, three away games in a row. But oh, it's just because yeah, of the last yeah. we'll get into them soon. But as it stands, ones that are announced from the from the so that three games in a week there Saturday the 30th, West Ham at home, Tuesday the 2nd, Everton at home, and then Saturday the 6th of April, 3 p.m. away to Craven Cottage, mm. where that's not going to be easy either. No, it's I'll not. Tell you that's a really now, good team. No? Fulham have just smashed Spurs 3 0. Yeah, yeah. That Munez is in great form. Whoever he is, he's absolutely class. I came out of nowhere. Six, goal, <laughs> six goals in seven Fangando. games. I think he was on loan to Millsbury last year and they made it permanent or something now, but he's there. Uh, He's he's looking like a real no. number nine. Him like the, handful, yeah, got the full got a, package. They've got a few good like. like uh, is, is he some, uh, by his name? I'm guessing he's South American. I, I don't so. actually I'm know where he's, he's from. Like Chilean or Mexican or something. Uh, they've got a few of them. Like even they like Brazilians and RGs. They've got loads of like really Paulina good like, young South Americans. They like, they're a really good team. Tottenham like I like uh, Fulham. Like I like them. Like, I they are. absolutely smashed. Mark Spurs. Silva play some good stuff. Yeah, so like I said, that's going to be a tricky, tricky game. They're having a really good season for themselves, for their own personal standards. Um, but we did obviously beat them not too long ago in the FA Cup. We did. At their place, so that should board well for it us. was in the league. We beat them in uh, December, didn't we? So uh, we've, Bruno, we've won, when they went out to 10 men, didn't they? Twice against them. Raul Jimenez. Jimenez. Yeah, two wins against them in recent years. So In recent years? Recent uh, weeks and months. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully so. But yeah, it's, it's not going to be an easy one. I'm backing it. Three wins in a row for me. Lovely. West Ham, Everton, Fulham, going for it. Next up, this is one of the toughest ones, uh, if not the toughest. But like we've just said, Fulham beat Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. We've got Tottenham on the 13th of April, another lunchtime kickoff. Strange. Mm. Two Saturdays, two lunchtime kickoffs on TNT. there. All right, TNT again. We're on TNT throughout those four games. Yeah. So Spurs coming to Newcastle, obviously, were battered 6 battered. 1 last year. What a day that was. One of the Absolutely. best days ever. Incredible. Amazing stuff. They obviously. Can be brilliant on the day, but they can be beaten on the day. Like Very just shown. inconsistent. So yeah. the thing is, what we know with that is, and Postecoglou, high line for life. They're going to be open. They're going to be attacking. Mm-hmm. It's going to be entertaining. I'll I'll steer away from the wins. I've done three in a row. I'm going to go for a draw against Spurs, and I'll take that all day long. To be fair. Yeah. And now we're at home, but <clears throat> if we got the other wins, I think that'll be good enough. No, yeah, I think I would as well. I think a, a team as good as Tottenham are, a, a draw is a good result, but. Let's say we absolutely smashed them sort of Smash. against the runner player last season. And they are just really, really inconsistent. So, and that's another one that if we won that one, it would kind of be a surprise one because I'd guess that we'd probably go into that game, the underdog, even if we did beat West Ham, Everton and Fulham. 
I don't think we'll go on a three-game winning streak against them. I think there's at least a draw among them. But even that's not bad. If we've got seven out of a possible nine points against them, three, I, would, I would definitely take that. Um, but I, Tottenham, like I said, they're so inconsistent, home or away. At home, I definitely feel more confident. Um, so that would be a massive three points. And yeah, I think we can definitely at least get a draw against them at home. Mm. And I think yeah. that would be a decent result as well. So if we've got two wins and two draws out of them four, it's not bad. Not bad Could do better. But uh, like I said, if we want to get U- Europe, we've got a big fight on our hands. So a couple of them draws might feel like losses, but at least there's no L's in that. So Exactly. Yeah. Be hard that though, because obviously Spurs will be pushing for Champions League top four. Still, mm, you would have thought exactly. Yeah. They did humiliate us, to be fair, at White Hart Lane, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium this season. But at home, after we battered them last year, I think an entertaining two, two, three, three, something like that. Mm, sounds good to me. Next one should be another battering, but for us, yeah, loads of goals in this one. I was there, Bramall Lane, eight 0 This time, do it again, St James's, twenty seventh of April, Saturday. So far, to be confirmed, may get moved for TV. To be confirmed, the time. Yeah. Um, Sheffield is home. Easy, yeah, three yeah. points, let's move on, got to be done. Then, and we can probably do the next one as Burnley. well, Burnley away, yeah. they're just shit. Yeah, like, got, a, got a big win the other day, didn't they, against Brentford? They but did, to too fair, little, too late, uh, they're, they're just making up the numbers, like, uh, that's really, really bad Premier League teams. They, I, I, I don't even know what points we're on at the minute, let's just go back to the league. 40, isn't it? 14 for Sheffield United, 17 for Burnley, absolutely abysmal, terrible, terrible teams. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Back down you go. Back where you belong. Yeah, they, they've hopefully, fingers crossed, no upsets, no banana skins with them two, but they've got to be six points guaranteed. See, they're the ones you look at now and you, we're sitting here like laughing. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. Oh, we'll beat them 8-0. Do it again. Probably Joe nil nil with Sheffield at home. Get beat one off there anyway. <laughs> Chris Wood. Chris Wood, I think. Go back to Burnley on loan. Uh, but no, I'm going to go. So, so far, we're unbeaten. This, uh, yeah. we're not, we're not, I've said West Ham, Everton, Fulham, Tottenham. Well, both of us said that, haven't we? Uh, I went for a win, you went for a draw against West Ham, but so far unbeaten. Mm-hmm. Brighton at home on the 11th of May, last home game of the season. Um, There's a bit of revenge there after the away game, that oh, was a bit right. of a shite show. That was, that was, to be fair, four or five games in the season, that wasn't it? It was. Three, maybe. Four, yeah. Three beat, or four. Beat Villa, lost to City, Liverpool, Brighton. I would just been beaten off uh, Man City. I went there, didn't go to Brighton, and then... I remember obviously Evan Ferguson was just on fair and he has yeah. I don't think he scored since. He's getting really cool, isn't he? Not, no. he's getting, Cause everyone was like, oh, he's the next Harry Kane. Then he's he's had a terrible season after he had his FIFA. first hat trick. <laughs> Any good? Oh, he's absolutely classic. On the new FIFA. <laughs> nah, 23. All right. Um and I Brighton since then, obviously roller coaster away for them, dealing with Europe, dealing with injuries as well. Yeah. The series of madness, one week there winning four three, <laughs> one week they're getting beat four four three. So with Brighton at home. Obviously, it was class last year. I remember being uh, Brighton at home last year. Shout out Greg in the Gallagher Lounge, Irish Greg. We were there 4 1, wasn't it? Uh, Bruno did the Arthur celebration as well. Uh, oh, um, yeah, the two late goals, wasn't it? And that pretty much guaranteed Champions League, didn't yeah, it? Did, well, that uh, night, yeah. we're like, ah, it's, got, it's done now. Because we were 2 really. 1, and they were pushing, they were ah. pressing us for an equaliser. And we got the two late goals, and like 4 1 on paper, we absolutely smashed them. But, but it, was it wasn't squeaky, that easy. It was but, uh, at one point. But the, the, the atmosphere for the third and fourth goal was absolutely insane. Yeah. So that one, Brighton, that's going to be on the hardest games as well, to be fair, because yeah, they, they, they will cause us problems. I'm going to see a draw on that one, you know. I'm going to see a draw. I would take a draw against Brighton because they are a very, very good team. They're just above us in the league, eighth with 42 points, two ahead of us. Uh, two places and two points ahead of us. And after the away absolutely battering, then pff, yeah, you, you've, you kind of take them lightly. Very, very good team, even at home. So yeah, I think it, it draws a good point. Decent enough. Brentford away is the last game of the season. We'll talk about it in a second because obviously we've got two games that need rescheduling due to the FA Cup. We've got my United Old Trafford and Palace at Selhurst Park. Palace we should have played last week when we got Man City, but obviously we're progressing the Cup. So let's talk about Palace first. Palace away. That always seems to be a draw for us. It is. They're, they're always an awful they're game. They're a very inconsistent team. but New manager now. The, the most likely seem that sort of 11th to 14th brackets, like them sort of three, four places, just seem Bang to be down. theirs. <laughs> like, <table FC. laughs> yeah. But they, on their day, they can beat anybody or get absolutely bad by anybody. Like mm. They're just such an inconsistent, unpredictable team. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, a difficult one to predict, but we sh- we've got to fancy ourselves. Uh, where are they? 14th in the league. Yeah, it's not the like I say, 11th. You're just in it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's their sort of bracket. 
but yeah, we've we've got a win home or away. Yeah, they're not a fantastic team. Nah. So yeah, I think we could get a win there. I'm actually going to say a draw because it's always a draw. <laughs> well, that, I've been that's, a couple of last couple of times yeah. and it's always a draw. It's just a stinking, stinking place to go. And I think Glasgow has a good appointment for them as well, by the way. You know, he wouldn't mm. be when he wrote a league with uh, thingy, didn't he? Yeah, Frank, uh, but they're, 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 they're one of them teams that you always fancy yourselves against because oh, they're, they're not a great team. They, ne- they never really have been. They're just a bang average, sort of mid table, bottom half team that you go up against and think, ah, Tiny Crystal Palace will beat these. But then. Secondly, it's a it's a one one. Right. So it's a frustrating game. They frustrate the hell out of you. And they've had some decent players in the past. They've got a couple. They had Zaha, like Elise and Eze, really, really good players. Exactly. So, yeah, depends that, on that, their fit, doesn't it? Not, 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 an, not an easy team now. Like I said, they've got a good manager. So definitely not an easy game. But it, it's one of them where you fancy the win. Got to get the three points, but it's uh, easier said than done. Two games to go then. Obviously, that Mine 81 is going to be midweek now at Old Trafford because of them getting through the semi-final of the FA Cup. Mangus. Mangus. So, <laughs> that one midweek, that may help us, obviously, them getting through the FA Cup because they'll mm-hmm. probably be looking at that. Well, that's their last chance of winning a trophy this year. Mm-hmm. They're not going to get top four. The, the, they will get fifth or sixth. Um, obviously, fifth could be big for them if Champions League does get fifth, so we'll still have that. But I think that could play in our hands of being midweek. I was there midweek a few months ago in the Carabao when our C team went there. <laughs> and absolutely Craft and Dome at, at their back. back. <laughs> back, back nah, 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 nah. That was a great night. Could we do the same again? I'm going to keep the unbeaten run going and say that one's going to be a draw. Again, a way you take that. So we've, since the cup final, we've had a really good record against Man United. It's like we've been in pure revenge mode. Like mm. we've absolutely... like. It, like obliterated them like, like in league. I think we'll beat them 2 0 in the league just a few weeks after the cup final. Go, uh, I will beat them in, this year. Was it 1 0, Gordon? Beat them 1. Was, was it 1 0? Was it more than 1? I remember Gordon definitely opened the scoring. Yeah, we'll, we'll beat them anyway. I can't remember what the score was, but I know for a fact that we'll beat them and we'll beat them in the cup and all. So, yeah, well. we've got we're, we're three on the bounce against them. Like, they're just really not a good team. I mean, credit for them for getting through to the semi final of the FA Cup, beating Liverpool. I watched them, was it last week or the week before, against um, Everton, and they were absolutely shit. Aye. Like, they, they, they won 2-0 because of two, two penalties, pens. and there were still more penalties now, to be fair. Everton were the, their own en- worst enemies in well, that game. Well, that's please, Everton, on Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> but they the, the were just absolutely awful. They're really, really not a good team. And I can see why the frustration's there. Like, they've always been whinging about their owners and the manager and whatever. And... Prior to our takeover, they were saying, Oh, we've got the worst owners in the league. It's like, mate, hold my beer. <laughs> There's absolutely no way you've got the worst owners in the league when we've got Mike Ashley. But no. now we've got our owners, then you can say, Eh, they're a bit shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're probably not wrong. Um, so yeah, like, oh, I think I think a draw away in the league's a good result, but I really, really think that we can beat them. Yeah, I really, nice. I really, I really don't think I they're like a very good team at the moment. No, so. they're not. The only thing with my United is, and you've seen it against Liverpool, I think Liverpool could have been out of sight. I remember that, especially that point where there was five on two and Gapo <laughs> pissed the wrong pass. And then, mm. uh, obviously, Man you get a late equaliser and go on to win an extra time. But I think it's games that other Man United turn up in. I think games Could against be. us, hopefully, we can get the job done. It's, you're going to have to take your chances, like, because Man United yeah, will make definitely. chances. Mm. Rashford gone at you and that the Os, Bruno Fernandes, they've still got game and players they had, I think. But uh, a draw there would be a great result. That would take us into the last game of the season, 19th of May. On a Sunday, Sonny Brentford, who, <laughs> to be fair, now are in real relegation trouble. Yeah. They have slipped right down the league. They're lucky that all these teams around them are getting points deducted. Literally, yeah. Because uh, they would be, they would be honestly in the thick of it. They're still are. They're only four points, five points is that above the relegation zone? Yeah. So they're five points ahead of Forest, who's obviously had six points so deducted. Only one point above the relegation zone, yeah. right? And then, yeah, they're one point ahead of Everton, who obviously had a six-point deduction. So, yeah, if, if it wasn't for uh, Everton and Forrest getting points deducted, they'd be right in the thick Maybe of it. 17 for 65. Yeah. So that one there, I think we'll go there and win. Yes, yeah, it could be too. different because of the all oh, right in the mix of a relegation battle. They'll be, you mm. would thought, playing hard out. Uh, Tony will have won against us, as always. But I am going to say we'll go there and win. So to be fair, out of the 10 games remaining, unbeaten, according to me. We're going to be doing the flyer. We get top four at this point. How many points is that? I mean, it's extremely real. Like, so I've said got... we haven't got beat once there. Do so... you know what I mean? If I went too optimistic. I think de- absolutely, definitely. Like, especially like, yeah. <laughs> like, obviously, we've got West Ham, Tottenham, 
Man U, Brighton's the main big one. Man U, Brighton, yeah. They're, they're the big games. Like, say you take a point against them. If you beat the rest, which is realistic. I have put draws for them ones. I think Everton we can beat. Tricky team. Same with Fulham and Palace. But Sheffield United and Burnley got the beat. Brentford got the beat. Like, I think I'd hope the Brighton we should win, even though I went with a draw, which wouldn't be bad. But it's Tottenham Man U where you could easily replace those two draws I've said with two defeats, to be fair. Mm. But the other team, if you do enough... If you beat West Ham, Everton at home, Burnley away, Brentford away, Palace, you know, there's enough points there where I think, like I said, plenty to play for. And on the basis of my predictions, we will still get European football. I'll say that we'll still, I said at the start of season seventh, I'm going to stick the seventh now. I would take that, yeah, especially from where we are now for how kind of disappointing the league season's been, just solely sticking on the league. We're not talking about the FA Cup or the Car- or Carabao Cup or the Champions League. League form has been really, really disappointing based on last season as well. Like, what? Like, what? When he, when he lost like four games, when he lost four games, were either the best or second best defensive team in the league. This season, that's just kind of all gone to pot a little bit. It's like, we've lost way more games. Like, how many have we actually lost? 11 games. And obviously, to, the goals against is awful this year. Isn't yeah, it? compared to the. Oh, hang on. No, no. 12 games, actually. That was the goal difference. We've lost 12 games, won 12, like compared to last season. Like, yeah, it's just a, a big disappointment that we're even in that situation. Obviously, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, there's reasons for that. So I'm not too downheartened by it because I know that there's reasons that explain it. But it is just disappointing to look at we're in 10th, having to battle your Wolves and your West Ham's and your Brighton's to even get Conference League. Mm. It's not, it's not a great look. So. No. But yeah, like we've just dissected each game there, and that that is the, the the maximum possibility that we could go unbeaten, even if there's three or four draws in there. You take them as long as you keep getting points and not losing points. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think seven's a really really good place to be where we I are think, right now. So yeah, I, I would absolutely snap your hand off our seventh right now. I think Eddie Howe made the point as well. You know, he reiterated the fact that the season's still very much ongoing and there's a lot of fight for. And and he mentioned, you know, any form of European football. He was asked. He, he agreed that would be a success. So yeah, I agree. six to eighth would be for me. And he said yeah. the main thing is is that people who are writing the season off now, it affects next season because Eddie Howe is saying, you know, we want to breed confidence and want to build momentum and take that next year. Yeah. You know, I think that's so important. That if, imagine if we did go unbeaten for the next 10 games, or even if we didn't, we lost to Man U Spurs, whatever, won six out of 10 or whatever, got top eight, top seven, then going into the summer, going into next year, gives you a bit of confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, Three or four absolutely. signings, ah, yeah, then you can definitely. start flying again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Even if we finished eighth and then the Conference League kind of like knocked down to eighth, like, ah, that's fine. Aye. Absolutely take that. Like, it gives you a little bit more confidence and, and, and like I said before, like, the conference league is a bit of like a B tech competition. Not many people really want to play in there, but at least it's European football and yeah. at least there's intent there. Like you're still going to be able to attract European level players. Like, and as a bit of, if someone was playing Champions League, it's a bit of a drop down, but selling the project now. It, it, don't you? Exactly. Like it's, it's better than now. Aye. Well, much better than now because the worry for me is if we don't get European football, I think that'll hugely affect the likes of Bruno and Isaac. Yeah, they'll want European football. You said, right? you said to Bruno, "Oh, do you want to play Thursday nights in the conference league? Or do you want to sit at home?" He yeah. like, "No, I want to. I want to win a European trophy." Absolutely. Yeah. And I, it's not see, the Champions League. It's see, not the he came, from, he came from Champions League at Leon, uh-huh. like, and that was one of the the goals and the ambitions. Like, he took a risk. He was the first major one, like maybe other than Trippier, to take that risk to leave a Champions League quality team, top three, top four team in the French league, to come to relegation battle in Newcastle but had long-term vision of getting to the Champions League. And he didn't know it was going to be last year. No. Like, it could have been this year, could have been next year. Like He was in it for the long-term vision, tiny, part, of that, <laughs> part of that plan. But yeah, like now he's had a taste for us. He's, he's played, played it at Leon, played it at Newcastle. If we don't have any form of European football, like Isaac as well, he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's been there, done that. Yeah. Like Gordon, Botman, they'll all want yeah. European football. Uh, of course, and especially now, like having tasted it, like, like beating PSG, mm. you're going to want that feeling yeah. again, aren't you? And the thing is, is that we'd actually have a solid chance of going far in the Europa League or the Conference League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really would, especially Conference especially League. Especially Conference League. I, even, I, think even we win that, well. like, I, Absolutely. I think we should. If we were in that. If West Ham can date, we can date. Exactly. And if imagine played... the scenes that these people that are kind of, it's blowing my mind, these people <laughs> who are, and they'll be in the comments now, 
who will be like, ah, oh, nah, I didn't want Conference League. Fuck the Conference League off. Are you mad? We haven't won a trophy in 16 years? Yeah, before last year, <laughs> fucking we won the championship. I know. Can you imagine <laughs> if, we, if we actually won the Conference League and it's a, it's a European it's still trophy? A European trophy. It's still a major trophy. Yeah. And the celebrations on the streets of Newcastle and how many people, us included, and yeah. people that are in the 50s and 60s haven't seen us ever win a trophy. You're the telling me you people, don't want a chance to win one on a Thursday night. It's the same as people slagging off the, the Carabao Cup because I know... In, Until you get there. In in like the early sort of 2010s, I think it lost its magic because you had like the likes Cheese of like Bradford City <laughs> and uh, Birmingham won it. Bradford City were in the final against was it Swansea. Swansea beat Bradford City and Birmingham beat Arsenal. And it kind of became like less important. I think your mm. big team started to not care about it as much, which opened the door for sort of like championship level teams to go out there and win it. And people were kind of relegated it to being like a probably like big tech fucking paper right, like, cup that no one really cared about. But in recent years, like City won it like three years in a row. Like Liverpool's won it. Man United's won it. And like people actually care about it. People want it now. Mm. Like it's still for me lower than the FA Cup. If you, if, you, if you gave me a choice, put, put it in both hands, Carabao Cup, FA Cup. Right. I'd take the FA Cup nine fucking 10 times out of 10. Right. But at the end of the day, the Carabao Cup is still a major tournament. It's still a major competition. And if you win it, you're buzzing. Because people were slagging us off when we got to the final, like, oh, look at them at Trafalgar Square. Uh, we celebrating at the Carabao Cup. Like, I put Man City wanted to win this cup. Liverpool want to win this cup. Man United want to win this cup. Mm -hmm. So why can't we? Exactly. So yeah, the, the, the Conference League is like that. Like, yeah, it's not a Champions League and it's not even the Europa League. It's a bit of a tin pot European Cup if you want but it's still a major European competition totally is and I'm telling you these people that are slagging it off or doubting it if we did get to a final I guarantee that I'll be absolutely buzzing the tits off oh, yeah, absolutely. maybe trying to go there trying to go to the semis yeah. of, if we won it be outside St. James Park mm. on the on the, on the cans of beer and that you know what I mean but you can't tell West Ham fans it's a shit competition no you can't oh, oh you've won out I tell you what those West Ham fans have got better would have had an unbelievable night yeah. and better memories than us in the last fucking 50 years. We're yeah, now absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't tell them. It's a it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's not a major trophy like West Ham fans. Fuck off. You ask uh, Villa fans as well who have actually won the, the European Cup in the 80s, I think, wasn't it? You know, which is obviously the yeah. Champions League now. Yeah. You, you ask them now, they want to win the Europa League, uh, the Conference League. They want to win the they? Conference League this year. So, yeah. Anyways, talking of cups then. Let's rattle off these before we get into some more Newcastle topics. This flying over these 37 minutes. Shout out to everyone that's tuned in. Please do subscribe and like if you haven't already. And if you listen on Spotify and that, drop one a sort of five-star review and follow us. Yeah. Cheers. Who's going to win the Cups? And that's, that's well, we're not talking about Conference League, Tim Partner. We'll, talk, <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll, we'll, rattle, through this, we'll rattle through the top three. Uh, Champions League? Champions League. Um, I want to see some tasty quarterfinal ties. Man City, Real Madrid, Arsenal, Bayern Munich. They, they are really, really amazing good ties, ties Amazing um, ties. It, it's it's difficult not to favour City, to be honest. Mm. Like they, they are just so good. Like if everyone's fit and healthy, De Bruyne, Aaron Haaland, Foden's just ridiculous. Like that 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 defence, like Kanji, mm -hmm. uh, that, that that is so so good. Like, say, like PSG and Barca, Real City. They're, they're the big ones. Like, Atletico Dortmund, that's probably the... Could have been us, that. It, it is, but that, that's probably the one that people disregard, even though they're still two top-class European-level teams. Could be with an underdog this year, you know, getting four, I think. Could be. And then you got Arsenal, Bayern as well. Um, I'd love Dortmund to win it so we could say, oh, well, we got knocked out of the group of death, but we're, you know, they went on yeah, to win it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, for, for me, I think it's, it's just really, really difficult to write off uh, City. Um, I, I don't know. I think the semi-final, the, the structure has already been confirmed. Has. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I might just need to quickly Google that. But if it was to be like a, a City-Real final, I think they're the two favourites for me. If that was the final, then it would be class. Well, and again, not to really... It can't be because City-Real play in the quarters, isn't it? That's the next game, man. It is, yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> It'll be... Uh, oh, I don't know. So see... So it be Arsenal, could be Arsenal City if uh, be Arsenal City in the semis. Oh, that's shit. That's why I'm saying another dog could win it because you could have Dortmund versus PSG. Yeah. The group, the group stage all over again in the semis. I did Google that before and all. It might still be in the history. I but I, that, that's how it. it's looking like. So um, you could see someone else winner of quarter final one, quarter final two, be quarter final four. Aye, so there you go. Mm. Could be Atletico Madrid versus Barca Spanish final. Could be Dortmund PSG like the group stages. 
yeah, just difficult to write off Man City. Um, it really is. Uh, like After the, winning last the, year. The beat Inter last year and let's face it, Inter weren't really the best team. They had a really, really good year. Done, mm. done well to get to the Champions League final, but it was always Man City's to win. Um, but if you give them some really, really good opposition, like they'll do well to beat Madrid because they're one of the top teams as well. Um, PSG, Barca, Bayern. There's some competition there, like. Mm-hmm. It's going it's to be a tricky one, but uh, yeah. For me, I think it's going to be whoever wins between Madrid City. Makes, oh, yeah, sound yeah. Ovenous, but they're I, my, like I just said, they're my two favourites. So, yeah. I'm, I'm going to... Even though there's so many talents Bayern Munich this year, I just think maybe Harry King, everyone's laughing. You're not going to... make not win the league as it stands. But imagine if he won the Imagine that. That would be kind of funny to be uh, fair. Everyone's like, ah, he spares cash. Can't, can't even win the Bundesliga and they've won it 10 years in a row. And he goes, just lift the Champions League instead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, at Wembley, innit? Yeah. So. I think 12 years in a row they've won the the Bundesliga this could be their first year without one Kane and Dyer again out there <laughs> spitting it up but uh, it would be quite ironic for them to win the Champions League that'd be quite funny like, I think yeah well I'm going to I'm going to see Real Madrid because I just think Bellingham I just think the heritage mm. football heritage yeah. I'm going to go on Real Madrid to win the Champions League you did you see Man City? Yeah, I'd say City, but I agree with what you said. Real Madrid would probably be my second choice, so it's definitely the winner of that tie. Mm. Whoever this game, whoever goes on to win it, will probably win the whole thing. And the FA Cup then, Coventry, Man U, Man City, Chelsea remain in that order. They play each other. Oh, imagine Coventry beat Man U. That'll be delightful. That would be amazing. That'd but be typical of Ten Hag, not to be fair. It would. <laughs> and I really, really would. I beat Liverpool, get beat off Coventry. No, it'd be great, that. Uh, but again, City's one of them four. Man City's going to win it. I was going to say, if, if you're putting City up against yeah, Real Madrid's, PSG's, Barca's, Bayern's, against Coventry, <laughs> Man United's, Chelsea, yeah, I think... Uh, Obviously, they've they've got Chelsea to get past, and then Man United in the fi- probably Man United in the final if they beat Coventry. So repeat of last year's final Manchester final again. Yeah, I, I can I can see it happening. I mean, it probably is to be fair. Like you obviously fancy United against Coventry, and then City's obviously going to be the favourites against Chelsea. So most likely going to be a repeat of last year Manchester yeah, derby, be. FA Cup final, aye, and then just a repeat the City winning it. Repeat, aye, repeat the result. I City on that. So finally, Premier League then. Or City going to win the treble? Oh, yeah, I mean, or for me, I'm gonna, they're going to win the double. I think I, I think Man City will win the Premier League and the FA Cup. And you know, as it stands, a third, Arsenal top, Liverpool are second, but obviously there's only one point between them. There's a huge game after this international break where Man City mm-hmm. take on Arsenal, so that could really be decided. That could maybe be the thing that kind of knocks City from winning the treble. I mean, they are, they are probably going to be my favourites, but yeah, because that in they've got Real Madrid midweek. Liverpool aren't in the Champions League. Arsenal's got Bayern. But it was about this time last year where Arsenal were a good few points ahead and bottled it. Aye. But but Man City were just steamrolling everyone. Like it, just, it doesn't matter how many points Arsenal drops. Man City were absolutely <laughs> coming for you. Coming there for was you. absolutely no chance that they were stopping. It was like it was like it was like a murder scene. It was, like, <laughs> it, was like, it was like a horror film. They were just absolutely slashing everyone in their way. Um and I could probably say that happening. Like I say, Arsenal, the bottled it last year, currently top, tied on points with Liverpool, got distractions like Bayern Munich. Liverpool's got not really going for them. So Liverpool should be putting all the eggs into this they basket. Could do it as well, Klopp's final year as well. They'll be going for it for that. So, yeah, I think this could probably be the hardest competition for City to win. Yeah. And I think the Champions League's probably going to be easier for them to win than the Premier League. But is it, it, it's City. Right. If if Arsenal drop points because they've got midweek fixtures against Bayern Munich, uh, if Liverpool drop points, if City go on the run that they did at the back end of last year to leapfrog Arsenal, there is so every hard. single chance that City win the treble. I mean, FA Cup, I think, is the easiest one. Um, I think it's so hard to yeah, call it now because it Arsenal, Arsenal are top and Arsenal have looked so good lately. Yeah, uh, Flying the goals. There's just... We caught against City and they've been there, done it, and even Liverpool have been there, done it in recent years, mm. COVID times. That that Premier League is so hard to call, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. How tight it is. Yeah, where's where's Liverpool in uh, the Europa League? Forgot they've got the easiest draw possible. I think at Atlanta. Is that the quarters? Quarters, aye. Quarters, yeah. So they've got so a nice so route. They've, um, they've still got them. I yeah, think they'll win that games. I think. They'll oh win yeah, that. yeah. You you'd definitely fancy them. Or this would be d- delightful to be fair. Bye, Leverkusen win it. Ooh, because be obviously nice. the one Xabi yeah. Alonso yeah, and he replaced fine. Klopp took Klopp's trophy from in the final I'll yeah, take that please yeah. and I'll take your job <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean class to uh, thing that would be good I'd like to say that 
Uh, but obviously AC Milan as well, who who was in our group that they're still in the pre yeah. League, the Europe League this time, man. It gets real tough. Yeah, it top does. teams in there. Um, right then, let us know in the comments who you think will win the cups this season. Obviously, still a long way to go, even though ten games left in the league. Loads of twists and turns. As a wise man once said, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Who said that? Do we Finn? I thought it was Warren Bond. Ned Schneebly. Happy, happy birthday, Warren Bond, actually. Hey, Found the channel. Had them on happy before. Birthday. Right then, we mentioned that Newcastle's fixtures there. We talked through them and stuff, but there is actually two other games at the end of the season. Toon are going down under. Oh, Australia. Yeah. Good day, mate. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I'm in deck in Melbourne with the rest of the squad mm-hmm. because uh, the, the club have officially announced now that they will be travelling to Australia and May. Three days after that Brentford game, they are going over Australia. Is that soon? It's not part of the preseason tour, obviously. It's the end of season tour. It's a commercial. It's a commercial tour. revenue stream. That's all it is. That's all they're doing it for. Make some money, grow the brand. That will be fun. And that'll be knackered <laughs> though. And some of them obviously won't even be going because a lot of It'll them will be getting be ready for the Euros. Twenty-one team, won't it? Yeah. Uh, they're they're going to come up against Tottenham, yeah, who have mentioned be, a lot. Not be playing my best players. Uh, they're coming up against the A lot A League All Stars team, which I mean, who the hell is in that? <laughs> uh, so it's Tim Cahill playing, is he? Hi, Tim Cahill, Grant Kowal, <laughs> Harry Kewell. To be fair, Kowal Mom, needs, sh- should be getting some game time. Should be, eh? Like, that, that's a perfect game for him to actually show his worth. Like preseason starts early for Kowal. I uh-huh. think that'll be a, a good opportunity He's for him playing in front of his hometown crowd. Yeah. But I think, uh, obviously, the best thing to come out of this, I know we've got a lot of fans here, followers that are watching from Australia. It's great to see that they'll be able to watch the tune in the flesh. Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing. Obviously, Newcastle, like they did in America last year, yeah, trying yeah. to grow the club, grow the fan base, yeah. grow commercially, everything else that helps with it. But uh, it's just a timing for me. I thought, you know, I, I, a I, didn't even realize, actually, I didn't even really read into it. Like, it came out like last night. So uh-huh. I, I didn't really like read into it, to be fair. But I just thought it'll just be like a preseason friendly that... One of them, in it. Like, no. I, I thought that was the. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't really read into it. That. But you much. think it would be the preseason tour on July yeah, time or something? I, but... thought, I thought that was going to be our like American tour last year nope. preseason. <laughs> but yeah, I, I didn't even read into the date, so I, I didn't even realize that. Like literally, yeah, that flying doesn't make sense from the Brentford game straight on a twenty-one hour flight to Australia. Yeah, that's a bit rash. That like for about four or five days for two games. But that's the only thing Madness. that I can imagine. It probably is unfortunately for you Aussie fans out there listening. It, you're probably going to be watching like the under 21s. Like, your, your key players of them. aren't going to be playing, especially so. those going into the Euros. Yeah. Most of the Premier League players are going to be knackered. Most of them's probably already booked the holidays. They're probably already. I'll be dead. filming them. Be I'll, I'll, I've got I'll, Barbados. I'll, 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 that's what I mean. They'll be filming like the day after Brentford. They'll be like, I'm Garen Holder. Wife's kicking off. Right. I'm, I'm, Took the kids I'm left. I'm going to America. I'm be Australia. This is pre season, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, yeah, I can't imagine any. Like key, like senior players playing, if any. They most of them, some of them are will be going to the Euros. Most of them just come off a long, hard season. Like if over play. fifty games, we would have played by the yeah. time we do that. So, so yeah, I, I cannot imagine we're having like what best squad there. I think it's going to be majority like under twenty ones. And there is going to be a huge chance of uh, a real big. Sell out for this one if they can do it because the stadium holds about 100,000 people. Yeah. Uh, that like, cricket ground's got like 100,000 capacity, isn't it? 90,000. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we've got Jolly Revolution there saying that 100 fans, MCG holds over 120,000. Wow, massive. that's insane. Hopefully it sells out. Fingers so hopefully crossed. Hopefully it does, aye. Hopefully be, uh, that international fan. We'll have to be seeing up at 3 o'clock in the morning to watch it. Watch Absolutely that? not. Uh, <laughs> not going to watch uh, what we've got in the Wayne? In front of Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm alright for that one. Thanks. I'm alright for that one, but it's I've got uh, something on that day. It's a sign of times to come, though. Do it is. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, and if we want FFP, you gotta yeah, push the gap. Yeah. That's why Spurs are doing it. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. I think I see it's good for the fans out there who can uh, watch it them well, in the flesh. We we'll want to be one of them like worldwide brands. Like that's how like yeah, Chelsea's are spending ridiculous money in the transfer window because they've got international popularity. Mm. Like Man United and Liverpool's been one of the two biggest international brands. For decades now, like that's why they're so big and popular. Uh, yeah, it's our turn, baby. Our turn, man. So it is the international break. We've took long enough to try not to talk about it. Forty-nine minutes because I know how much you don't like international football. But yeah. have you seen the New England kits? I have. Yeah. What do you think of them? Not too bad. I think they're all right. Very different the away one, isn't it? It's causing a bit of stir. Is it? Purple little patterns down there. Is so it? Everyone's like, "Whoa, where's the red kick gone?" 
We're England. Where's the purple on the St George's flag? Like you know, like, like we've had blue kits before, and like it, I was gonna say, it looks more navy to me. I didn't, didn't really inspect right. it that closely, but we've purple. had navy kits before. So yeah, that, that's that why... astronaut that's on the that, wall that, there that no one can see. So that's fine. Yeah, that, I just think you got an idea. That, that, that's why I didn't really think now of it because I thought it was navy and we've had them kits before. So yeah, if it's purple, then yeah, that is a little bit weird. It is. But some part of it, I can't even mind it whether I like the away one or not. The badge looks alright. Mm. I like the material in the kits. It looks nice, yeah. It, it, it looks, it's got like a really retro feel about the home one. I think it's nice the I way. I feel like one. every kit since about 2006 has just been pretty boring. Yeah, they're just like white. Aye. Like they've just got no like pattern on it. Like like the was it 2002? You had like the St George's cross. Oh, it was quality. 2004, you had like the little one on the shoulder. Loved the little like, one on the shoulder. Yeah. Even the even the remember the little buttons, reversible job. Little yes. Buttons, reversible yes, job. Yeah. That was quality. Yeah. So, uh, so I think since about 2006, every time like an England kit's released, it's just like oh, that's just a plain white kit. Yeah. It's just even you know, the little <laughs> O2 Beckham, Beckham against out. Greece, the straight with the red. Yeah, classic yeah. Aye, so, there's stuff that made it a bit different. Uh, so from like the, the 90s through to like 2006 or something, like England kits were nice, but since about 2006, I've, I just haven't really been asked by them. They're just plain and white and boring. Like. Could be worse though. It could be, uh, well, I don't know. The France one's quite nice, but have you seen the badge? I don't know why it looks it's so fake. It's color, massive. Right? The yeah. badge. Like, it's like a star. Like the is, is it roses? Whatever. But they've just they've just made the different. the France logo huge. So it looks like it's straight from Turkey. Oh, the France one. Oh, oh no. And like, it's uh, and it just looks like Nando's logo, big time. Oh, does it? Prop no. Nando's FC France. Like I seen uh, Victor Wembanyama wearing it. Uh, so those are the kits anyway. Drop in the comments what you think of them. I like the home one, undecided on the away one. This Saturday we will get to see Bruno. V Gordon at Wembley, Brazil, going mm. against England on Saturday in a uh, in a little friendly. I mean, as far as friendly goes, it's it should be a decent one. He's not playing bloody Macedonia or some crap we had. We well, will see some talent, and obviously we'll yeah. be cheering on Gordon. Hopefully, yeah, that, that's kind of why. Like, I'm not really that asked about international football. Obviously, major tournaments, I, I love it, and I'm behind them just as much as anyone else. But friendlies normally let you play like. Your Macedonias and your Andorras and San Marinos and just all these shite teams and you scrape like a one 0 win or something because it's just Jordan Henderson and say, what? <laughs> please no. What? Kobe Mayne has been called the day. Yes, he has. But uh, I say Brazil and um, <laughs> Belgium, very very good teams. Uh, tough tests. Yeah, very very tough tests, and I think it's a good Euros warm up. Hopefully, mm -hmm. this is sort of like an indication of what the Euros squad could be. Hopefully not, because there's some players that probably shouldn't still be there, but. <laughs> Yeah, at least these should be entertaining regardless of the results. Like I said, at least they're good teams and not just shite warm-up games. Exactly, I just can't really be asked today. Even though for the official Euro warm-up games, one of them being at St. James Park on the 3rd mm -hmm. of June, we picked a nice opponent in Bosnia and Herzegovina Bosnia. just to get the confidence up. Do you know what I mean? That's what <laughs> you want. I, but that's the thing. It's not. <laughs> like, normally, False normally, confidence. Normally these things, they are... It's, it's like Smash them 6 and we're going like, to win it. It's like the, uh, um, like the longest yard. Like what well, Adam Sandler's uh, idea, so, you know, like you get like a tune-up game, you just play some absolute shit team and you absolutely smash them, get your confidence up. Like that's what England sort of kind of typically do, but you don't do every time. Every time we do that, <laughs> it's like two one or one nil. Like you no, don't no, no, smash no, we them. Went, it's we, shit. we literally went to the Euros in 2016. We yeah. went to the stadium in shape because that's where the one more yeah, game Australia. was. Australia uh -huh. won two nil. Mm. Played against Australia, I think <laughs> five or six a day, like yeah. lads. Two nil. I remember we played Jamaica. In one of the warm up games, <laughs> Peter Crouch, yeah. robot, I think that's what that was. Uh -huh. I think we did smash it, to be fair. But again, we did, but World Cup didn't yeah. go well. Tournament didn't go well. That false sense of security, yeah. it's not really working well. Right. <laughs> but I'm all here for it. I will be there on Monday, the 3rd of June. Uh, yeah, so hopefully we do get to see Gordon on Saturday. I think more chance for seeing him against Belgium on the on the following game, to be fair. Like, well, it's it's, it's, it's it's a friendly. It doesn't really matter win or lose. It's just kind of like Euro uh, warm ups, like pre Euro warm ups. Like, so, yeah, it doesn't really count for now. Tell you what did count. What did count was the lasses. Well done, you cashnated women <laughs> yeah. for a brilliant comeback Maybe last well. weekend. 2 0 down against Wolves, mm -hmm. 3 2 winners. A sign of true champions, that right there. It really is. Yeah. It was a fantastic comeback by the girls and obviously this weekend they had uh, Kenilworth Road on Saturday yeah, for, for that final. Uh, final of the League Cup there against Hashtag United yeah good luck lasses really hope to bring the trophy home eh? yeah well done to them and, uh, I think this is like a sign of where the the takeover has gone because they All haven't right. just focused on the men's team they've put a lot into the women's team as well as so when they took over they're in the fourth tier of women's football that... having to pay for the babes training and everything yeah they weren't professional 
No. Now, they are professional in the top of the third tier, getting ready for promotion to the second tier, and they're in a cup final. Yeah, uh, amazing. So yeah, like the men's team that took were from the bottom three, almost guaranteed championship team to Champions League within 18 months. Mm -hmm. The women's team gone from fourth tier to second tier in a cup final within two years. Right? Yeah, the, the movements are there. So yeah, well done, lasses. Yeah, very well done. And again, it's it's a great sign of the ownership, how they've took the women's game seriously for me, build up. Because remember, I know people might not be a fan of women's football and everything, You've still got old school people who aren't going to watch it and that, but if the women do well, mm -hmm. everyone does well. It yeah. does well for the club because that helps towards so financial kind of fair like play as well. One the roof, like yeah. the Newcastle United isn't just the men's no. team. Obviously, you've got like your, your kids, your academy, the under-21s, the women's everyone team. Everyone do like, well. Yeah, absolutely everyone. But um, I was just going to make a point. Oh, yeah, the... They weren't even properly connected, were they? Like no. the women's team ran they separately. Fishy associated with the club. Newcastle United. So they, they just kind of held the name. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, Amanda Stavely and everyone like brought them under one roof, like Toys R Us. Uh, the <laughs> Toys R Us, Toys R Us. Yeah. They, they made them officially part of the Newcastle United brand, and they, they made them professionals. They're, still, they're starting to get paid now. They haven't got to pay their subs. And uh, yeah, now they're close to being one division under the WSL and they're in a cup final. So, exactly. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, man, I see we made the point that the aim was to get them in the Champions League as well. Mm -hmm. And what, what, how good that be? Get women's, <laughs> women's nights under the lights at St. James Park Champions League as well. Uh, we've seen how good the attendance is always on in these second and third division games. So, <laughs> unbelievable stuff. Yeah. And nailed on for promotion. Pretty much the girl is now a couple more wins. Should do yeah. it. So happy days. Look forward. And that's that. winners' mentality. Like, say, though two nil down, three late goals. Like that. That's what winners do. Aye. That's like Man City last year. Aye. Getting them positions, but turn it around. Yeah, exactly. Good stuff. Good luck for Saturday, girls. Hopefully, Howard. bring a trophy back. The tune from Stinky Luton. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two more topics, big ones as well. To be fair, Steve Bruce today has came out and uh, back Mike Ashley again. Saying, you know, obviously with loads of controversy lately around Steve Bruce. I've did a couple of videos on mm -hmm. it. So you can watch them back if you haven't seen them, where Amanda Stavey said he didn't want to come to work. And then now she backtracked on that, apologizing for that. Wonder why. <laughs> um, and then now Steve Bruce has came out, not related to Amanda Stavely, the comments for the all about Mike Ashley saying, oh, a very well run club. Do you know what I mean? Never would have went bust on a rash. The totally you know, FFP and all that. So again, he just keeps on bigging up Mike and keeps on waffling his big old mouth when he just thinks, Steve, can you not just enjoy that eight million and uh, shut up, please, literally. and just sail off in that uh, golf course sunset that you've been enjoying? You've had another pair from West Brom and Al. Shut up, man. Honestly, just man, leave, leave it be. To be fair, I haven't even seen these comments. So this is this is news to me. You didn't want to. No. Basically, just just saying how great Mike actually was. Solid, oh, solid owner. Class. Might not have spent much, but you know, best interests at heart. It, it clearly wasn't. You, <laughs> you weren't the best interest at heart. No. Mike Ashley hired you because he knew you were going to be easy. Fact, like, yes, man. Rafa wanted far too much. No, fact, no By way. far too much, you, you had the club's best interest at heart, and that was far too much yeah. for Mike Ashley. So he, he hired a yes man, someone that was lucky to be there. Jim Kerry. Plucked you out from, was it? 10th in the championship I think he got oh. Sheffield Wednesday the, the season before and that was his level that was his best mid-table championship at that time was Steve Bruce's best level like you were lucky to be there <laughs> and Mike Ashley plucked oh, you man. out from there and plopped you into the Premier League at your hometown club because you thought you would love it and you, you, you're just lucky to be there like I've gave you an opportunity yes sir three bags full sir how much sir that was Mike Ashley. No, that that was. was Steve Bruce and Mike Ashley's relationship. Like you, you were just lucky to be there because you didn't deserve it. No, he didn't at all. Maybe that's why he's so thankful to him. Like, she has make anyone else with uh, his job. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if I got if I got a job, my boss was just like straight in. Oh, do you want this promotion? Do you want a few million years? Do you want one of them promotions for new reasons? I tell you what, that bloke's a legend. Uh, <laughs> you're <laughs> absolutely shit at your job, but he has a better one for uh, a lot more money. And then again, when he got sacked, you, you you've been sacked for being absolutely crap at your job. <laughs> but don't worry. He has several million pounds to enjoy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Ah, but that's yeah. why Mike actually didn't move on from anyone because I, I think you would have sacked Rafa if he could afford to. I would have. Because I think that was just so much of a dispute there. I think Mike actually would have just quite happily wiped his hands with him, but he would have had to pay him off. Mm. And same with uh, Steve Bruce. Like, it, I remember during like, lo uh, lockdown, we were doing the watch-alongs. Every week there'd be comments from people saying, I, I hope we'll lose this game because uh, Steve Bruce might get sacked. Like, 
yet deluded. He's not. It's gonna not going to happen. Like, stop wishing your team to lose first and foremost. Aye. Like, if you support a team, just be happy that they've won, regardless of the owner. But if we lose, if we got beat ninety-seven nil, Steve Bruce is still in a job. Mm. There's no way Steve uh, Mike Ashley's going to sack him because a he's going to have to pay him out, and b anyone else to put up with it? Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I knew fine well that Mike Ashley uh, wouldn't sack Steve Bruce. The only way Steve Bruce was going to leave would be at the end of his contract or a takeover. Yeah. Thankfully, the takeover happened. Exactly. <laughs> got people there, Kenny there, saying Brucey was saying these interviews as well. That's fans in the street told him that they loved him. <laughs> You're lying! <laughs> You're absolutely lying! <laughs> that did not happen. That never that happened. That did Brucey. not happen. If no. they did, they were just being nice. They, they just wanted uh, a I... selfie. So they're like, oh, I love you, Steve. Oh, yeah, dead class manager. I used to... Oh, they were just being massively sarcastic. I know. I know oh, from sarcasm. Yo, you're classy, Steve. Brucey, cheers. all the great work you're doing. Uh, Steve's you're doing one of me. Dead, dead good. Cheers, mate. Oh, you're doing dead good. Keep it up, Steve. Oh, yeah, no, man. <laughs> Honestly, who was that that you bummed into the street? Steve, you fucking man. Do you know what I mean? Like, who, who's saying that you've done a good job? Was your brother, was your son you know, taking uh, a dog it, for a walk or something? some smackhead on Spice that didn't uh, even know you uh, That's what it was. Uh, it was a homeless bloke that Brucey gave 25 pence to. Cheers, <laughs> Steve. Crack and job, you uh, did. that good. Give it up. Cheers for the Spice, Brucey. <laughs> God, it's Peter seeing he's doing a good job. <laughs> anyway. That did not happen. Maybe Magnum would have been saying that at home. Uh, doing uh, a great uh, job, Brucey. Uh, keep it up, Steve. <laughs> Give it up, Stevie. Keep it going, Stevie. Oh, God. Right then. The last... Uh, discussion here, and I want to go on for a good five, ten minutes on this one, is the talk of Longstaff to Leeds United. This has been the rumour mill the past day or so. Leeds United preparing a bid for the Geordie midfielder of around £15 million if they get promoted. Leeds are currently sitting top of the championship, but are eyeing up the Geordie to spearhead their campaign next year back in the Premiership. Now, we have talked a little bit on previous oh, podcasts about, yeah. about Sean Longstaff, but now it's really relevant because, again, he was getting criticised after the Manchester City performance in his way out of his depth. Again, more people are saying, you know, he's a passenger. He goes missing. He's a waste of a shit. People are saying, I had people saying, you know, he should be down with 10 men Ooh. with Longstaff because he's that bad. Now that Leeds are looking at him, hmm? Leeds weighing up a £15 million bid for him, would you sell him? And again, get in the comments... Keep our sell on this one. Would you get rid of Longstaff for 50 million? Well, we, we did speak about this in episode seven last week, and I think this is kind of slap bang in the middle of our valuations. Like you said, you would sell him for seven. <laughs> and, Forgot about that. Yeah, and uh, I, I was a little bit more optimistic just because of uh, he's in a really, really bad run of form, and it's actually came out since then that he's been having injections. He mm. has been injured. That's true. So he has been playing through injuries. So I think when he's fit and healthy and in form, I, I think he is an invaluable player for Newcastle. I think he is just one of them players that just gets the job done. It's not pretty. It's very gritty. It's, a, it's a sometimes <laughs> shitty. <laughs> he, sometimes he just gets the job done. And I think I think that kind of player is invaluable. Sometimes the ones that kind of go under the radar. Let's take a bit of that, isn't it? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I enjoy that. Good yeah. Raymond. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Poetry. Uh, are kind of overly optimistically, and I'll I'll hold my hands up to that and say I overly optimistically valued it around about twenty to twenty five, but fifteen twenty five for like that be fucking plus. Yeah, I, I, I did agree with that as well. Let's say it was a bit. I was uh, shooting for the stars a little bit there. So maybe it's twenty. You said seven. I said twenty. This is sort of bad. we're in the middle. Yeah, Le- Leeds have been watching. I, I think fifteen is kind of realistic, and I think we're both agreed for squad depth. I wouldn't get rid of him because I think he mm. is one of them players who can step in and knows Newcastle. Nobody knows New- Newcastle as well as Longstaff does. So I'd, I'd with a heavy heart sell him. But yeah, 15 million, that's probably a true valuation. And for FFP, would need to sell players. And if if he is overvalued at 15 million, then you've got to take it, haven't you? I think so. I think 50 million is fair. I forgot I said seven. That's <laughs> probably harsh. I might have been angry at the time. And like we'll have, we'll have Eddie Howe has came out and said that he has been playing with injections. He has been injured for quite some time. He's struggling, but he's playing his heart out because he loves the club, mm. that type of thing, you know. They don't realise what goes on behind the scenes is what he said about yeah, how much yeah. effort the likes of Longstaff are putting in to, to carry on. And yeah, yeah. I, I didn't doubt that either. I don't doubt it. You know, Sean... You know, Sean Longstaff, he's one of our own. And he is. He's one of us. He's a Jordy. He's from Shields. Great. But I said in the Man City reaction, you know, we need to stop picking players based on birth certificates. <laughs> I don't even care if he's from Shields anymore. I'm, I'm not going to start Sam Fender because he's from Shields. You know what I mean? 
But for the... Brissy was one of our own. He's from Moore's End. Brissy. I'm from Moore's End. He's from Moore's End. And like if Paul Dummer who's just taking up a space in the squad for no reason. Like, yeah. I think there's more people ahead of Sean Longstaff I would rather get to. rid of. And obviously the main but... one is Tenali, who can't play, so that's the most annoying thing. Yeah, but some, some of the players that you need to get rid of aren't really worth now. It's like you had, ah. you had, you had Dummets and your Richies, no, like Mark Gillespie's, Loris Carrius, even Emil Kraft. I think Kraft's underrated and just signed a new contract, but you're not going to get 15 million for an Emil Kraft. And Dubravka, you, pr- you probably wouldn't get 10 million for him because of his age. Yeah. So 15 million, it's a good offer. I think it is a good offer. And like I say, for FFP reasons more than anything, I would love to keep him around for squad depth. I think he could be a good part of our future if we are going to develop and maintain a top four, top six level. Having someone like a Sean Longstaff mm. in the squad, even if it's low, low down, mm-hmm. I-, I think it would be a nice sentiment more sentiment than I feel like um, Dummett, who's been sticking around for the last two, two, three, four years due to sentiment alone. Two uh, games a season. Yeah, so I'd rather keep Longstaff than Dummett, but uh, no one else is going to be getting any more than 10 million value for them kind of at the bottom of the if, if the roster chart. Like even Murphy, I didn't really know what Murphy would be worth, mm, but not let's say 15 million, it, it's not a bad offer. And it could go a long way in terms of FFP. Now, you're right in terms of squad depth for me because if we do get Europa League or Conference League and we're playing Thursday night European football, then yes, a long staff, especially in the group stages, mm-hmm. would be ideal for that. Do the nitty gritty shit. I, I do the nitty gritty shit in the middle of Slovenia, <laughs> right? Having shit in Slovenia on a Thursday night. <laughs> me and him in budget hotels, hostels. But I tell you what, I would have him there because then, say, if you were playing out of a Carabag, who actually are doing <laughs> now, beat by Leverkusen, mm-hmm. but if you're playing there, the first thing that's sprung to mind, if you're playing them, or you're playing buddy FK Mulder or something on a Thursday night, right? And then you've got Man City on Saturday, you think, right, I tell you what, Joel and Tonali, like, you're rested. Sean, yeah. get yourself in, son. And you do a job. And there you go. Yeah. That's his role. Absolutely. No, your damn role. <laughs> as The Rock used to say. Even maybe it's Miley or something along stuff and Miley in the middle of the park. Exactly. Yeah. So, fine. But at the same time, if Leeds come in with £15 million, then that's that's a good offer. I think that's a solid offer. You could even... Solid starting offer. Exactly. I was just about to say, you can even try and Negotiate niggle a bit, a bit more. Yeah. Even if you yeah. said 15 rising to 20. 20 due to Add-ons, appearances, something, yeah, something yeah. like that. You know, like that's a great deal for me. Yeah. Because again... If, Which, that, if that's add-ons and like incentives and stuff that could make it rise ab- above that, they say even if you try to haggle, say say sixteen with four million in add-ons, yeah, you've got to take that. Like. You've got to take that, because like. again, let's be honest, when Tonali is back next year and Willick's back to fitness, then you know that the midfield, obviously, hopefully Bruno and that stay. We'll get into his future in a minute. Bruno, Julian, and Tonali. Or Willick, Bruno, Tonali. You know, Longstaff's not going to be starting. Maybe will be ahead of him. Uh, yeah, he will be. So. He's Anderson? not going to be starting. Yeah, you'll be on the bench. So if you can get 15 to 20 million for a bench player, yeah. then you take that. And he's obviously homegrown, so that helps financial fair play. Yeah. So that's what you kind of have to do. Look at Man City. Didn't want to sell Cole Palmer to Chelsea because he was homegrown. Yeah, wait. Right. But Man that City helped them really massively. Homegrown players, it helped mate, them massively do that. need to have that quota. Newcastle don't have that problem. We've got loads of English uh, players, English and British players. So we don't have that homegrown quota. Like we could qualify for. It's like, like Champions League, you need to have so many like homegrown players and stuff, and even in the Premier League, Man City have just invested a lot in foreign players, so they've had to have that like sort of British quota. But we've still got like your, like your Dan Burns, Longstaff, Gordon, Miley, um, Anderson. Like we've got a ton of English players, Lascelles, Pope. Like we don't have that problem. No. Nah. Uh... I put it out on social media. It was a very strong majority was seeing sell because I did put keep myself on the tweet and on Instagram. You can check it out on the Magpie channel. I would say it was a good 80%, if not more, was seeing sell at that price of 15 that price, million yeah. to Leeds United. We've got the live comments now on YouTube. Aaron saying I'll drive long stuff to Leeds myself. <laughs> Anthony says good move for Sean and for us, which I think it is. To be fair. I yeah. think Leeds United have got club, promoted. Big yeah, club, very back good in the team. Prime. I think that's yeah. a great move for him. Very good team, especially if, if they are in the Premier League. Like, yeah, I wouldn't wish him on, on the championship. I think he's better than that. But yeah, a, new, oh, yeah. a, a newly promoted team, such a, a massive club like Leeds. Like, I think it'd be a really, really good move. I think still north as well. Exactly. Like he has to move to London on Still close there. to the Whitley BA shotty team. <laughs> that he loves so dearly. And uh, you, you know, he's still close to his family and stuff. And again, when you think of Leeds, you know, it is a big club, passionate fan base. Massive. He could go there and be a star. He could, yeah, he could be one of their main people. They could yeah. cheer him on. And, and, and God forbid that they did get relegated. Like, 
did love to keep him around. Like if they if they went back down to the championship, he'd be absolutely class in the aye. championship. He would, aye. really good. Gone are the days we wanted fifty million from. So yes, Kenny, remember that? Man United, fifty million. How true? Me, was that? that was very very over optimistic. That like, but that was only like six months into his career or something. Like, he literally just broke into the first team that November or something. And then uh, by the summer, Man United were. I think they offered 30 and be like, now nah, we want 50. Yeah. <laughs> get out. Yeah, 30, man. <laughs> no, Remember, obviously, I seen Matty's brother, didn't I, in Greece uh, when I was living out there this summer and he was laughing his head off, taking videos of us, like, uh, trying to ask him questions about it. They got Matty. Uh, Aaron as well saying, you know, sell and get someone better. 50 million pure profit helps towards financial fair play and mm. we can get a proper number six in. Yeah, yeah. So, Agreed. makes sense. And he has saying he's English, Premier League proven and only 25. Got to be worth 20 million plus. Well, that I can agree with as well. That was kind of the point that I was getting to last week. Like, say he is still young. He's he's, he's valuable. I say there's a lot of English tax as well. Like, say Man United wanted to come back in for him, and they were trying to offer fifty million, uh, fifteen million. We would probably turn around and say, "Now nah, we're one twenty-five. Yeah, and uh, I can agree with that. Like teams, if it was a big team, it's I mean it's unrealistic because they're probably not going to want him. But if, <laughs> if, it, if it was like a City or a United or a Chelsea or someone would would, would, would add on that British tax and say, nah, 25, 20, 25, easy. Mm. So. I think you could get rising at 20. Mm. Uh, finally, last topic is also a bit of transfer activity because apparently scouts, scouts. from Paris Saint-Germain and Real Madrid have again been watching Bruno Guimaraes, but not just Bruno... They've also been watching Alexander Isaac. And we both fuck off, eh? Why haven't you used Why are we letting them in? <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> really, yeah. If that's St. James's, knock them back. Your name's not down, you're not getting in. Yeah, get away. You get know on what the mean? list. Get on the list, bro. Yeah, he's not on the guest list. I'm like, get him out. Chuck him clean out. We're not going to... Scouts watching Bruno and Isaac. That's a bit worrying, isn't it? I mean, people were worried after Bruno's comments on the weekend, you know, saying, oh, we need to fight for Europe and all that. And if we don't get Europe, will he leave? PSG and Real Madrid, two of Europe's biggest clubs. More so Real Madrid, right? Because I was having this conversation uh, with someone the other day. I completely forgot who it was now. But I was saying to them, you know, I don't really think I could... If we went to PSG, I'd Bruno, we're talking about here. Mm. Both, to be fair. Obviously, they're looking for an Mbappé replacement. There's talks of Isaac or Rashford coming in for mm. Mbappé at Paris Saint-Germain. But both of them, I can't understand either of them wanting to go to Paris Saint-Germain. Yes, it's a mm. fancy city in Europe. It's the 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 love the shop in Louis Vuitton and all that. Mm. But it's a dead league, dead dead league. Much more competitive the Premier League. Much better fans. Much better everything. Champions League, yes, they're still going to be there, but are they going to win it? Probably not. Mm. If it's a Real Madrid, it's a different story for me. Like yeah, if someone comes in for them, then it's like it's curtains, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Um, obviously, yeah. If, with with the PSG thing, it's just that, yeah almost guaranteed shit like yeah pretty much guaranteed the league mm. yeah guaranteed champions league football they are still a massive european club massive like fan base and players like they've got really really good players because of that attraction but also because of the qatari ownership they can give you wages like they're gonna they're gonna give you handsome money so i can i can see the attraction of uh, psg obviously Living in Paris, that is a big thing as well. Bruno's always in Paris now, and he says he loves it there. Came from came from the French league, so might have ties. Been there, there done it, man. Been there, done it. But yeah, I do, I do agree that uh, Real Madrid's a different animal. I think I think wherever you play, if Real Madrid come knocking on the door, it's hard to say no to Real Madrid. Like that, they're obviously, probably the European giants. Like the you, you forget about the your, boys. You forget about your um, like Man United, Liverpool, Bayern Munich. AC Inter, like Real Madrid or other boyos, like like it's it's gonna be hard to say not Real Madrid. So it would be, and it would be hard for the club too as well. To be fair, now because obviously Bruno, what I've heard is obviously the release clause is one hundred around one hundred million, mm. and it is apparently it has to be upfront in cash. Jack Reed is special. He's the only that's the only player in history that has went for an upfront fee of that much. Mm. Yes, players have went for big sums before, the eighties and ninety millions, but they've been spread been out. Plans, plan that. I clone that thing, but this one flat out fee bang 100 million on the table. It's fair. I mean, sorry for the audio listeners, but, <laughs> <right there. laughs> but uh, I mean, I think it's fair because like 100 million is a lot. And if you are going to get it in one big installment, like say you can probably spread that cost over two, three, four years, so you maybe he's only going to get 30 million up front. Like that doesn't really help Newcastle massively in FFP terms. I mean, it does, but 100 million. We can spend uh, 300, 300 million uh, like right now, not in three, four, five years' time. Like, we want that money up front. Um, but yeah, like, it, I think especially if we don't get Europe, then 
we're going to come across them problems. It has been said that we are going to need to sell for FFP. Darren Eels has came out and said we need to sell some of our big players. And if we don't get Europe next year, then we are probably going to have to look at that. I think Bruno probably is our most expensive player. Players, teams have been looking for him pretty much since we signed him. Yeah, like you have Real Madrid's, Liverpool, Cities. There's been hundred million pound rumors since then. So I, I could see Bruno going, but if you want Isaac as well, you're gonna have to cough up another triple figures, like. Mm. So if what, we reckon he's that hundred mil? Well, we paid sixty odd. Look at what we've done since. Exactly, so. and he, he's still so young. He's still only like twenty three or something. Exactly. Like, he's got his he's best been, years. He's, weird, he's a bit more proven now because he's he's been banging them in double figures in the Premier League. So yeah. I wouldn't even com- start a conversation with anybody unless they're going to offer three figures. No. So if you sell Isaac and Bruno for two hundred million, that's that's about and five six hundred million you can and spend. We're we're brand, we can get a full eleven for that, can't we? And we're not in Europe. Five then, or six yeah. big players. I think that's a it, it, it's a strong possibility. Ah, it is like unfortunately, you don't, yeah, don't want to be a stinger. Don't want to do it. it. It is going to be absolutely lifting. But like you said, with FFP, you can flip that and. Say we spell that send them for 100 million. What was Isaac 64 or something uh, like that? Like, we could go out and try and spend like 60 million, 70 million on a replacement and then a replacement for Bruno for 80 million, like and still have money left over. We'll still so, have a good, yeah, couple of hundred million to buy two, three, four. Yeah, build your squad around additions. them two sales. So Aye. I could see it happening, unfortunately. Yeah, it would be awful to see them leave, especially. Well, I was gonna say, especially Bruno because he's passionate and he gets it, but Isaac as well as a killer up front, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Clinical striker. One of the best for me in the league, but at the same time, at least you know that these owners we will reinvest and we will try and go again, like we've just said there, with with a few more players. But obviously, we hope we can keep them. Yep. But in this world of a Real Madrid comes knocking at your door, and because of FFP, it'll be hard to yeah. keep a hold of him. Andy makes a good point. I'd be more worried about Man City coming in for him because again, Pep Guardiola was. Yes, I would uh, much rather up, sell him abroad than keep him in the oh, Premier League and have to go up against them. them. <laughs> that would be I wouldn't want to have to boo him either. You know? I yeah. oh. that, would, that would be devastating. Uh, if, he, if he goes to PSG or Real Madrid, then fair enough. Pack your bags, see you later. <laughs> but uh, staying in the Premier League and have to come up against you twice a year, maybe more if, if you get drawn against him in the cup, which, which we would. Um, yeah, that, that would be heartbreaking. I wouldn't like to say that. That would be devastating. I, I, think if, uh, I, think, I think Bruno will stay... For another year or so, I don't think you leave it this I summer. Do. I think you'll, yeah. I think you'll stay for at least another yeah. season. Lee. But it is difficult because I know he wants to stay, and, and, you, like, and you know, like the passion that he's got, like especially uh, Bruno. You know, like how much he, he seems to have, like probably like invested in the city and the club and the fans. Like aye. he's fully got another Jolly boy now as well, isn't he? Fully involved. Had Jordy two B. kids born in Newcastle, so you know he's always going to have that connection with Newcastle. Um, but yeah, I just think if we don't get European football this year, and that, that's a big reason why we need at least. Uh, conference league. Mm-hmm. Like if 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 we don't even have that, then and Real Madrid comes knocking, there's no way we're not going to sell them. Nah, they could even put in transfer requests, and I, I know that would probably break Bruno's heart more than Isaac and it, as, as much as ours. He probably doesn't want to, but if Real Madrid comes knocking, hundred million minimum, maybe he's twenty million in add-ons. Newcastle reluctantly reject it. Bruno puts in a transfer request. You've got to let him go. Yeah. I would say that one. Right then, people, get your questions in. We'll wrap this one up now. A few minutes to go. Uh, finish off on a QA and a as always. Um, let's just do a quick scroll up with the last couple of minutes of what we've talked about, see if anyone's got any questions. That, then we'll go back up. Chris Some is asking, in, what do you think about the Australian trip at the end of the season? We've talked about that, Chris. We'll have a little rewind. Rewind. Rewind inside uh, when this one finishes. Uh Without selling, what's our summer budget supposed to be? Oh, God knows, mate. Probably 100 or million at a push, to be fair, like, without selling. Without selling? Without selling. Fuck, yeah, I don't know. I suppose it depends on where we're finishing the league, to be fair. I think, obviously, you get like bonus money from the Premier League on where you're finishing the league. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't even be able to hazard a guess at the minute, to be fair. But, yeah. Hundred million minimum. 100 mil, probably I. Uh, oh, well, you'd hope we're saying through our phone summer, more. but you were going to get little, rid of loads of deadwood this year. But that's for another video, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously we'll keep this going throughout the summer when there'll be plenty yeah. of talk about hopefully plenty of transfers Fingers and all that. Crossed. Biff is asking. Uh, Biff. Even lads, well, even Biff, is Pasty guy still kicking about? He is. He's, <laughs> no, he's normally in the chat. To be fair, he? he's not dead. He's uh, he's thankfully still alive and kicking. 
and he is normally in the chat as well in these live shows. I haven't seen him tonight. Oh, yeah, man, Pasty, if you're there, where's Pasty getting out, there? Uh, but normally he's in hospitality, isn't he? He's smashing the cash easy. Oh, he's he Hospitality Rich. for Blackburn, for Sutherland, for the Champions League. Get himself a couple of pints and make some people sneak in. He must have, he must have won fucking Dion Odi or something. Pasty guy, right? He's, <laughs> he's won some memes, isn't he? Uh, he had hospitality for the women's game at St. James's. <laughs> isn't he? Oh, he did, because we were in the press box. He was above me. Uh, and and, and, and the, the, the friendly uh, Gateshead. I'm sure he was in hospitality at Gateshead in, in pre-season. Hey, he's li living the life, Pasty, like. Living the Breaking Bad, Pasty style. <laughs> Okay, well, that was a nice drop. Might get another one. What you got there? Blind Faith. Aye, that's the one. Fairly, that's probably my favourite as really, well. Really, really is. At the start of the stream there, before we came on, uh, got Geordie Revolution here offering accommodation in a mad golf course for us out in Australia. So, Ooh. appreciate that, mate. Um, drop was a DM, but it's... Probably looking difficult for me to come out of Australia. I'm not going to lie, mate. I looked at the flights the other day. It was 1,300 return. That's how it, man. Aye, that's how it, aye. So where, you, where are the games? Melbourne. Melbourne. My brother lives in Brisbane. I was going to say, you've got a brother out there. But that's still a couple of uh, hours flight. A couple long time. Long time. Maybe if it was like official pre-season tour, but not just for a few days and two games. Yeah, like I, say, I think it's really going to be like the kids. I think the majority of the first team players are going to be allowed a holiday, first and foremost. But the the ones that are selected for their countries at the Euros, then, yeah, that, I can't really see too many like key players going over there. No, you cannot like that close. Uh, rifling through some of these. Fraser still here, man. Well, he'll be going to sell that apparently, hopefully, because they actually like him. He's had a good loan spell down there in the championship. Yeah, Fraser, Hendrick, um, Hayden. I'm still on the books, these boys. Uh, he hadn't played at the stadium machine the other day for QPR. Yeah. How many more games does Howe lose before he gets sacked? That's G double eight. He was not getting sacked. This is back to the Brucey days. Hennen, do we play in Adidas? Now, last game of the season. Now, we'll miss that tradition, I do. Remember that match of the day? I used to love the last do, match of the day. Though, Some fair. still do. Some still do. Adidas, me? We haven't for a we long time. We haven't for a long, long time. But, I used to love that, watching, yeah. watching the upcoming kits on the last game of the season. Yeah, that, that is... Seeming to be a bit of a dying tradition, but some some teams do still do it. Yeah, that's possibly mainly just for us. Tell you what, I'm looking for the old long sleeves. Ooh, <laughs> Have you seen uh, Adidas released the German Euro kit with the long sleeves? Oh, I haven't seen that. Dears, actually, mate, no. you need to Google it. It's unbelievable. The German flag oh, runs down the sleeve. Oh, orange and black, and oh, it's it's very sexy, like. Very, very nice, that German long sleeve uh, kit. I'm looking forward to it. Or the Argentina one as well. It's lovely, and that could be based on the Newcastle one, the, the thick stripes I'm hearing. Mm. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Let's get your last couple of questions, just rifling through them from the hour and 22 minutes we've been going for. Long one. Long one, indeed. If you haven't subscribed and give a like, please do, and the audio listeners do the same. Do Follow that right now, will you? Those reviews. Thank you. Right then. Last couple, last couple. Bruno will be off to Spain. See somebody there. Bruno stays for a few more years. See Aaron. <sighs> Hope uh, so. Catching up here now, to be fair. Catching up. So, what's the last couple? There he is. Past? There's past the guy in there. Joe Chilcott. Talking about shifting out Hendrick. He'll be the hardest one because he's the one that can't get a game for anyone. <laughs> but he can't run out there somewhere, doesn't it? I, I think, think it does. Uh, Hendrick's yeah, away, yeah. man. Free agent. Uh, Get him off the books, man, will you? Uh, Manuel Dennis would be a good signing. Was he still at Watford? He was at Forest last I heard. Is he at Watford now? I can't remember. I don't know. I liked him. I remember signing him on FIFA in 2020 during lockdown. <laughs> uh, he was a bit is, of a goal scorer for a while, wasn't is, he? Is, is the news of the takeover first happened, I went on a pure mad FIFA spree, like trying to like make like a realistic like new Newcastle team, but uh, obviously that was like when the court case happened and the, the takeover was pushed back like a, a good year after that. But I, like, I, I signed Emmanuel Dennis now. He was, he was decent. I liked him. He had a good little spell for Washburn, to be fair. He like. did, uh, and he, he, was, he was at Forest last year. But I, I, I didn't even know where the hell he is now. I've seen a good question when it was live, and I can't find it, but I'm sure it was, uh, what players would you pick from the teams that are in the bottom three to sign in the summer? So Ooh. we'll finish on that question. Sorry, I can't find it right on the screen. You can put it in again, and I'll bring it up if you're still watching. But it was oh. a question 
uh, on there. You know, we'll pick one player from each team. That's currently in the bottom three. Sheffield United, Bailey and Forrest. I cannot lie, there's not many. Sheffield United. Uh, Brown Diaz. Is he on loan, isn't he? He's, he's yeah, on I wouldn't loan. have him next year. I wouldn't be better than that. Let's have a little flick through the None squad. of the keepers. He's Chris Basham, John Egan. Oh, that's awful. Holgate, awful. Bogle, Holgate. What about the, uh, the Souza, the Brazilian? He's mm. half arid. James McAtee on loan from uh, City. I'm going to go on. Rian Brewster. I don't remember when he was oh, meant to be like the, the next hell, best man. thing. Rian Cameron Archer is not too bad, to be fair. It's a backup third choice striker. I, I, well, I, we're going to need a third or fourth choice striker, aren't we? I'll go on Sosa. Yeah. Bernie James Traff Trafford's Trafford's a decent a keeper, keeper, to be fair. It wouldn't be that bad, to be fair. Um, none of the Jack Cork, Jesus Christ. Nathan Redman. Sound that big. We've been linked with him in the past. Ah, he's from uh, Sheffield United. Ah, he's not. He, yeah. He's a squad player. We get rid of long stuff. Someone who can just come in and play Thursday nights. <laughs> yeah. None of the four. Fauna's not bad, but he's on loan from Chelsea, isn't he? Yeah. Not the best. Again, I mean, Berg, so, so far, Sosa from Sheffield. Big from Burnley. Forrest, I'd take a few. You've got a decent team. Matt Sells? I'm <laughs> absolutely not taking Matt Sells. Will. Will Williams is all right. Uh, Willie Bolly, Willie Bunny, Sangari is Ari, Kyo is Ari, give us away, he's probably long. gonna be give us away. Gio Reyna, I forgot he was on loan there. Give us away, Chris Wood, Chris Wood, a one I'd take a one a one uh, Hudson Adoy, Alanga, Arigi, decent forwards. Um, yeah, it's gotta be gives away from Forest, but. Yeah, Burnley and uh, Sheffield United are clutching at straws a little bit. We are clutching there. Like uh, you mentioned, Rian Brewster there. Someone in the comments can't believe Liverpool rinsed Sheffield United twenty million. Pounds was that what it was? For well, he was me he was meant to be top class in money. He was meant to be like the like next best young thing. When he was going to ah, be like England's like future ideas. superstar. There. Jesus Christ! Eh? How the how the mighty fall? We'll end on that one. On that bombshell that is Rian Brewster's <laughs> career. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rian. Sorry, Rian. Uh, wish you better yeah still making loads of money in some shades you know mm. so thanks very much everyone for tuning in to this week's podcast remember the TMC podcast live every Tuesday at 7pm on YouTube thanks as well to the people that have listened on audio we are available on all podcast platforms Spotify Google Apple wherever else you find them stay tuned to the Mac by Channel TV plenty of videos coming this week even though it is an international break do subscribe and enjoy yourself. Bash. Yeah.